Hey guys, today we're gonna work on framing a wall. Basic 101 wall framing with one door opening. It'll be fun, come on and join us. All right guys, so here we are. This is our space, this is where we're gonna be framing the new wall. So, a couple things, this is a remodel, okay? So, there were walls, there were existing conditions that we're working with. As you can see down here on the sill, anytime we're touching concrete, we have to use pressure treated material. So we're gonna walk you through step by step on how to lay it out, how to measure and cut our studs, and then actually build the wall and put it in. All right guys, so basic tools to frame the wall, right? So I just wanna, I wanna emphasize anybody can do this with a few basic tools. We're actually gonna be framing the wall with a pneumatic or an air gun. Basic tools, you've got your general framing hammer, you've got a speed square, you've got a snap line or a chalk box, tape measure and a marking device. I've chosen a pencil. And then for cutting our material, our wood material, we're gonna be using a circular saw. The goal here is to simply show you how to do it without spending a fortune on it, so. What I like to do when I'm framing a wall, I wanna take a look at my space, my existing space, and see what I need to do to it. In this case, it's a remodel, so we're gonna have to do some things to the space in order to make it ready for our new wall. So in this case, you can see the existing ceiling had already been drywalled. So in order to get new positive pressure nailing on our new wall to our old framing, I need to remove that drywall, okay? And I wanna put in what they call backing support. So I'm gonna actually remove the drywall in the areas that I need, and then we're gonna put in backing support so that when we put our new wall up, we can attach it to it. Out here, you can see, I'm slowly starting to load my cut station. The material today is dug fir. These are three and a half by inch and a half. In this case, these are eight footers. We're gonna cut them down to the desired length based on the existing conditions. One thing I'll tell you guys about natural wood or real wood has a crown in it. And what I mean by crown is that it has a natural curvature. So it's really important to sight down the edge of the framing material that we're using and identify which direction the crown is going. In this case, I look down this piece here. It's got a natural hump or natural crown to it. I'm gonna mark it. So that's up. The reason why I do that is to make sure that when we go to build our wall, all the crown of the boards are going in the same direction. And the reason why is that when you go to install your drywall later or your wall covering, it's paneling or whatever it is, the wall is not in and out, right? So if, if you stagger the crown, it's not working in unison, you're gonna have problems with the finishing. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure for my plates, okay? So we've gone ahead and, and snapped our plates down on the ground. So this is where the wall is gonna go onto the floor. Okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape in and measure my plates, okay? We're looking at like 80 and 7 eighths. So 80 and 7 eighths is our plate dimension. Typical wall framing is single plate on the sill, and then we've got our top plate, and then we have another plate on top of that. Okay, so there's two top plates and one bottom plate. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna measure and cut for both my sill plate, which is on the floor, and then my first top plate. I'm gonna do that right now. This is our bottom plate. Now we're gonna cut a top plate. We've got our plates cut. Okay, now the objective here is to lay out and identify where our studs or where our wall framing is gonna go. The wall has one opening, one door opening. It happens to be a pocket door. The first thing I do when I'm laying out walls is I wanna lay out my openings first. As I do that, I know I wanna come off the wall about a foot, plus or minus. As we come off the wall, we're gonna come about 13 inches. I'm gonna call it 13 inches. That's gonna be the start of our door opening. The plans are telling us that it's a 58 inch rough opening. Rough opening means in the clear, so it's stud to stud. We need 58 inches rough opening. Door openings require a minimum of one trimmer underneath them. So we have a king stud and a trimmer. This mark right here represents the opening where it's gonna end up, right? As I mark my stud, this is an inch and a half tool that I use. This is gonna represent what we call a trimmer, okay? The next board next to it is gonna be what we call a king stud. So we've got our king stud and our trimmer. Back on the other side, king stud trimmer, king stud trimmer. So now we've got basically our door opening measured and ready for our framing members. 
Everything else in the wall is basically what we call filler or drywall framing. What I'm gonna do now is we always need to put a stud on the very end, right? So that we have something to nail to. So we've got our first stud there. When laying out for regular studs or common studs, what I like to do is I like to take in consideration, if you're laying a piece of drywall onto the wall, the drywall needs to land in the center of the identified 16 inch increment. So stud placement is typically every 16 inches, okay? So instead of marking a stud at 16 inches and placing the stud on that line, I actually measure three quarters of an inch back so that if we were to install a brand new piece of drywall up against this corner here and it broke on a stud or landed on a stud, you'd be landing on the center of the stud versus if you were to go 16 inches on your measurements and you put the piece of drywall in, you'd have to actually cut the drywall back and lose a little bit of drywall material. So by simply shifting your studs three quarters of an inch one direction, you're gonna help ensure that your drywall lands on the center of the stud, hence saving you material. The general rule is, they call it 16 inches on center. So 16 inches there needs to be support structurally. But if we just shift three quarters of an inch back and go 15 and a quarter, 31 and a quarter, and so forth and so on, we're ensuring that whatever material we put up against the wall there is gonna land directly on the center of the stud and hence save material. 15 and a quarter, 31 and a quarter, 47 and a quarter, 63 and a quarter, and then we've got one on the very end. We've got one here, and I'm gonna mark which side I want the stud. So I want my stud on that side. And notice, guys, how I'm marking both plates identical. Okay, that's gonna ensure that when we build the wall and throw it up, everything is lined up perfectly. So now this wall is essentially laid out. Now, because there's an opening in the wall, we need to put what we call a structural header in, or a header to carry the opening weight. The headers go from king to king. The trimmers are installed underneath the header, and I'll show you guys how that works. I need to get a measurement for my header, so I'm gonna measure from my king stud all the way over to my king stud. This header actually measures out to 60, I go a little bit less, 61 and 560. Okay, so now that we've got our bottom plate and our first top plate measured, we gotta take into consideration our second top plate, right? Typically, what we do on first plate and second plate is the second top plate is going to be either three and a half inches or the thickness of the wall that it's intersecting short, or it's gonna be three and a half or the thickness of the wall that it's intersecting long. I've marked what I need. I've set my table and adjusted down to only an inch and a half because that's all I need. Okay, this goes inside. So now as you can see, we've got our plates on the ground. We've got our sill plate, which is a plate that goes on the ground. We've got our first top plate, and then essentially our second top plate. If you notice, this top plate is longer because it's gonna be overlapping onto this two by six material. The reason why we did that, and you can see, five and a half inches longer, is because we wanna make sure we have good positive connections. So it's not necessary, but it's, it's typical. Now that we've got everything laid out, we're gonna measure for our studs. So I'm gonna measure the overall distance here, which is 86 and we'll call it three quarters. That's our, that's our concrete to our existing ceiling. Now remember, we've got a sill plate, we've got one top plate and another top plate. Our stud length goes in between, so that's that's the dimension that we need to determine. So these plates together are an inch and a half each. So we've got an inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, which is four and a half. I like to go a little bit more because once you start putting the wood together, believe it or not, it actually starts to grow a little bit. So instead of four and a half, I'm gonna take off four and three quarters. Give us a little bit of play. Our concrete to our ceiling height is 86 and three quarters. I'm gonna subtract four and three quarters from that. That's our stud height, 86 minus four and three quarters is 82. So 82 is our stud height. We've gone ahead and cut our header. Okay, so this is the piece of wood member that goes above our door opening. To make sure we don't get confused and all our marks get transferred up properly, I haven't moved our plate. So what I typically do now is I'll lay down my header basically where it's supposed to go. Now what I'll go ahead and do is I'll mark. We know we're gonna put a stud right here, right? Stud, I'm just gonna transfer all these marks up so we don't get confused. Everything lines up, that's the goal. Now I can transfer these up so that we don't get confused. Just like we crown 
our studs, we also crown our headers. The crown is actually going up. We want to make sure when we install headers above any opening that the crown always goes up. It's very important. It's more important for the crown of a head, of a structural header to go up than it is the studs. The studs is more of a convenience, right? So when you install the drywall, you don't have a problem. The headers need to be pointing up because over time, naturally, the wood is going to start to settle just due to gravity, due to the weight of whatever's sitting on top of it. And so if it's already upside down, it's gonna to continue to move down. All right guys, so now that we've determined our stud height, I'm gonna measure how many we need and go cut them. Looking back at our wall that we've laid out on the ground here, we have some studs that are full height, others are what we call cripples, and they go on top of the header. Anything that is going inside the door opening obviously is not a full height stud, right? Because it's an opening. Anything outside of your door opening, those are full height studs. So now I'm gonna go through and count how many I need and go cut them. So we've got one right here on the very end, okay? We've got our king stud, which goes from plate to plate. Now we've hit our door. We're not gonna put any full height studs in our door, right? Because we've got our door opening in the way. So we've got one, two, and then we come down here. We're still in our door. Our door runs all the way to where? King, right? And then we've got our king. So that's number three. And then we've got one on the very end. So we've got one, two, three, four. We need four full height studs, okay? This is basically where our wall is gonna go. Now it's gonna intercept the ceiling right in line with this. In order to do that, in order to make sure it's properly supported and we have backing for our drywall. So put some blocks in for support. Same thing on the other side. These blocks allow us to go ahead and put our backing in up against a solid support. Basically, now you can see Got support there. So well, the wall goes up, we have something to nail our new wall to. Okay, so that's the reason why we do that. And now we've got our space kind of cleared out and ready to go. We've got all of our plates cut. So to explain how this works, I'm gonna draw it for us, okay? To represent our basically our door open. This is our concrete. Then we've got our top plate, and then we have our second top plate. This plate right here is an inch and a half thick. The bottom of the header goes up at the top of our door opening. So in this case, we want our door height, our door opening to be 85 inches off the floor. So from concrete to bottom of header is 85 inches. We laid everything out in unison so I make sure we add it to where we're gonna be doing it the same way. This X right here goes up against the wall. This X goes up against the wall here. That way we don't confuse ourselves. Here we crowned all of our studs. So David's just taking his studs now and he's laying them out the four common studs where they're supposed to go. We've got our two kings and then we've got our ones on the end. When we nail off our studs on the very, very end, what I like to do is I like to hold them back a little bit from the very edge. As we put our plate in and our stud together, I don't want to nail these right even flush. I actually want to shift my stud in a little bit, an eighth of an inch or so. And the reason why we do that is so that when we go to actually put the wall up, we don't have any interference or any restrictions as far as getting everything in. Crown up, X against the wall, lay it in. Now that we've got everything kind of laid out to where it basically needs to go, David's gonna go ahead and actually start fastening the wall. On two by four studs, I usually like to put two nails per stud, okay? So two nails that go from the top plate and the sill plate down into the studs. Good. We kept everything nice and flush at the very top. He's got two nails from the top plate down into the stud. All four studs have been nailed off on the top. Now he's moving to the bottom. He's doing the exact same thing on the bottom. So two nails, and as we move on, we got that. So now that we've got our studs nailed off on the top plate and the bottom plate, we're gonna nail off our header. So I'm gonna use a reference point, line up the wall, make sure it's somewhat straight. And remember, we wanna go 85 inches from the floor, from the concrete to the bottom of the header. So basically the sill, the bottom of the sill acts as the concrete, the floor. And we wanna mark 85 inches. 
right there. That's where the bottom of our header goes. On four by sixes, from our king stud to our header, I typically like to put five or six nails. So we've got there, everything's flush. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay. See the little space at the very top of our header? We need to fill that in with, with what we call top cripples. So we'll go ahead and measure what the distance is. In this case, it's three inches. Three inches. We need to cut blocks that are three inches tall. Every 16, we've got to put a stud. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We need six. Making sure that all of our marks line up. Top cripples are nailed off. We measured, they're in place. We need to put in our trimmers, right? We talked earlier in the episode how the trimmers go underneath the header. So now that the header's in, we can put our trimmers in. We'll measure the trimmer. The reason why I put trimmers in is after the wall's up and we are ready to install the actual door, we can use the trimmers to adjust and plumb up the opening to make sure we have a nice level flat surface to attach our frame to. So the trimmers are meant to kind of not only support the header, but also to use to adjust so that we have a nice plumb surface to attach the door. 83 and 3 eighths. I'm not gonna nail this a ton just because we may have to adjust it later for the door. Maybe one or two nails, all you need. So now that we've got our trimmers in, we're gonna measure for our fire blocks. Fire blocks go at 48 inches from the sill. The reason why is to allow for both drywall nailing and if there was a fire and fire got in the wall, it would act as a stopping point. This fire block measurement is gonna be four and three quarters, and this one is gonna be eight. Now this goes, that line that I just snapped represents the bottom of the block. If you want the block to be 48 in the center, I mark three quarters back. Done. Blocks are in, everything else is ready. Now we want to put our top plate in. The top plate runs, in this case, five and a half inches longer. In this case, we're not overlapping the plates at all. Here, there we are on that side. So we want to flush these out. The top, top plate gets nailed, two nails on the very, very end of the wall, and then one nail staggered up and down in each bay. We come along. I went up on that one, down on that one, up, down, up. We're kind of staggering and stitch nailing the plates together, basically. So two on the end and then staggered every 16 inches in between. This wall is now ready to go up. Okay, so now that we've got the wall ready to go, we're gonna lift it in place, put it where it needs to go, and then fasten and secure it off. As David grabs me two blocks, you can see here, we use these blocks to what we call chalk up the wall so we have something to grab onto when we lift it. So I put the blocks on an angle and then I lift the wall up and now I've got the wall up off the ground so, I can, so we can lift it. One, two, three. As we get the wall in place, guys, we want to make sure we stay on our line as best we can. We want to make sure we get the wall kind of in place. That is. Remember, we have a new wall attaching to old framing, okay? So in order to make sure that the reveal and the connection between the new wall and the old wall are good, we wanna make sure that we maintain the margin all the way up. So in this case, we marked about a half of an inch, which is gonna count for the drywall to overlap on. Same thing at the bottom, half inch. What we did here, guys, we have a laser level. 
We line it up with our pivot point here, which is the corner of the plate here and transfers up to the edge of the top plate there. So now we know we're in line. We need to move this top plate over to the green line so that the wall is perfectly plumb. That's it. Now we can nail it off. And see guys, I'm nailing off into my backing. So remember the backing that we put in earlier? I'm toe nailing up into the backing. That backing piece that we installed. The backing acts as support for the wall, but it also acts as a nailing support for drywall once we go ahead and drywall the ceiling. So it acts as dual purpose. So what we're gonna use to secure the wall to the concrete, there are shot pins, anchors. So we fired one pin. This is called a ram set tool. Put the pin or the nail in the gun. Put the gun down on the sill plate. Put your hand behind it and fire. That's it. So now we've secured the wall to the concrete. We've attached the wall to the existing framing and we've secured it with backing to the existing ceiling. So it's quick, easy way, fast, don't need a ton of tools to do so, to frame a wall with the door opening in it.